Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Osborne Pro TV. My name is Rob and today I'm going to be showing you how to set up an uh, encrypting file system in your domain environment. Uh, one thing to take note of before I get started here is that Microsoft actually recommends if you're going to have uh, a bunch of encrypted files to store them in web dev and that basically puts them all in one place and has them being transferred over HTTPS. Um, the, the setup I'm showing you is assuming that you're going to use a network share and that files are going to be encrypted here and there inside of that and that not all encrypted files are going to be in a single location. Um, so that's just the uh, presumed environment that we're working on. Uh, to encrypt files, because the process can be very you have to click through a lot of options. So for example, if I'm going to encrypt this example file and I'm just an everyday user, I right click, go to properties, and then I would go to advanced, check the encrypt box, click okay, then apply, and then another prompt comes up that I have ignored that says, do you want to encrypt this file or do you want to encrypt the folder it's in? Um, leaving extra uh, room for a user possibly doing something they don't want to do. So to accommodate for that, I created this application where they can simply click and drag uh, the file over here, or they can type the file location in if they like, click decrypt, and that decrypts the file, which you can see there's no lock symbol there anymore. If I click encrypt, there is a lock single symbol there again. Um, I also have a way to simply back up the key. So if I click up the back or click the backup key button, we're telling the user where the key is saved, which is in C users, then their username under EFS backup. And we also have a password set for it automatically that they can uh, save in their password manager. It's automatically copied to their clipboard. So if I were to, for example, to open Notepad, you can see I can paste the value in here. And that also ensures a somewhat secure backup key is used and they're not just typing their name in or, or a three character password to protect their EFS key. Um, it also reminds them not to lose the password. Uh, so that is basically the purpose of that application and why I put that together. A couple other things to take note of with EFS is in order for it to work is of course people need certificates assigned. You want to have a recovery agent that can be used for people who no longer work for the company or people who move to a different computer or maybe the operating system needed to be refreshed. Uh, you want that recovery agent to uh, use as an account to recover keys. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do here with that in mind is uh, just to mention as well too, uh, the user accounts in order to use EFS are required to use uh, be trusted for delegation. So in Active Directory, if I go to Tools, Users, and Computers, uh, the user accounts this is selected not selected by default, but under the Account tab, if I were to check the account is sensitive and cannot be delegated switch here, that would prevent EFS from working. So we want to leave it unchecked for the users that are going to be using it. Um, also, if I have a file server and I'm going to have uh, users encrypting files that are stored on that file server, they need permissions to sign into that server so that a user account can be created because when they encrypt a file, that's what happens is a user account's created and then an EFS certificate is assigned to that user profile. Uh, you don't want to delete that user profile if you see there's a bunch of them on your file server because it will prevent uh, that user from decrypting any files that they've encrypted there, which is going to require a lot of use from your recovery agent. Um, also, that network share needs to be trusted for delegation. Now, your domain controller is the only device that's trusted for delegation by default, so you would need to add this separately onto your server. So to do that, under Users or Computers, you find your uh, computer object, go to Delegation, and then select Trust this computer for delegation to any service. Um, I created a, under my GitHub repository where I created Encrypt it, 
I also created a PowerShell script called Trust Computers for Delegation. And basically what this does is uh, it generates a list of computers that are enabled and have been signed into in the last 60 days and then it enables Trusted for Delegation on them. That's just a way of making that process quick if you need to do that. Um, but So that's the delegation and the sign-in and that's what you need for EFS to work. So in order to apply this, what we're going to do is first create our certificate template. So on our certificate authority, I go to tools, certificate authority. Then I go under my domain here, certificate templates, and you'll see I have mine created already, which is Osborne Pro EFS. To create that, we right click certificate templates over here and select manage. Then I would select basic EFS. I right click and select duplicate template. And just to show you what I have here already, this is Osborne Pro EFS. I leave the defaults under compatibility settings. Um, and the reason I do this is because the Windows Server 2003 is able to be requested, or those certificate versions are able to be requested in here at the CERT SRV URI on your uh, certificate authority and I like having that option available in case I ever need it. Uh, generals where you give the certificate a name I typically use replace basic with the domain name and I also leave publish certificate and active directory selected but I also add the do not automatically re-enroll if a duplicate certificate exists in active directory. The idea behind this is that a user doesn't keep getting assigned EFS certificates for whatever reason, so that if I want to share a file with them, I'm not selecting from six different uh, uh, usernames, uh, basically six different certificates to ensure I'm giving them permissions to the right thing. So that is that part. Under subject name, we didn't change anything. We leave user principal name selected here. Leave fully distinguished named here with build from Active Directory information. Under cryptography, I leave it at 2048 bits. You can make it 4096 if you like. However, if 2048 is good enough for the Department of Defense, it's good enough for me. Um, under request handling, we want to leave the defaults here as well with allow private key to be exported and under the security tab, we want to leave authenticated users with read permissions. Domain users who are going to be assigned these EFS certificates, we want them to have read, enroll, and auto enroll. For domain and enterprise admins, we want read, write, enroll, and auto enroll. Now, if you're an admin account as a member of both of these groups here and they don't have the same permissions, the least privilege is applied, so you're going to be restricting that account a little bit. So just keep that in mind when you're setting those. Um, so that's all that we needed to set on there. That created our certificate template. Uh, on the recovery agent, if we open this just to show you what I have there as well, this one I changed by publishing the certificate in Active Directory. I do not automatically re-enroll if a duplicate certificate exists or I left that unchecked, I should say. For compatibility, I kept those settings the same. Cryptography is 2048. Uh, for security, this is the main difference. There's no domain users here. It's only domain admins and enterprise admins, and they have auto-enroll permissions. Authenticated users, we left with read. Well, domain admins have read, write, enroll, auto-enroll, as do enterprise. Uh, for request handling, we have the private key exportable in case we ever need to export that. And that's basically it there. So now with our two templates created, we can close our certificate templates console out. Right click on certificate templates again in our certificate authority window. Go to new certificate template to issue. And then you would select the two certificates that you want to add and click OK and that will make them appear here. So now that our templates are created, we want to be able to assign them. So to do that, we need to go back to our domain controller, and then in Server Manager, we would go to Tools, Sites, and Services, and we're going to force replication to the other domain controllers in our environment. So to do that, we would uh, drop down Sites, 
and then the different site names, servers, the server name, and until you get to NTDS settings. And then for each domain controller in your environment here, right click on NTDS settings and select force replication uh, to this device or whatever it says. I only have the one domain controller so I can't show you that option unfortunately. Um, so now that the template is able to be assigned to people, we need to create our group policy object that assigns the EFS certificates to everybody and define some of our basic settings for it. So to do that on our domain controller again, we go to tools and group policy management. Under default domain policy, this is the standard for setting the encrypting file system uh, settings. So I would right click this and select edit. Then under computer policies, Windows settings, security settings, we're going to go to public key policies. And we're going to go to encrypting file system here. So if I right click on this and go to properties, we're going to allow encrypting file system. This is the default value, but we're defining this. Um, we're going to allow elliptic curve cryptography and I leave create caching capable user key from smart card. The other ones you can select, um, since we're not using a smart card certificate or an actual smart card, I'm not going to check the require one box. You can select encrypt the contents of the user's documents folder. And what this will do is of course encrypt any user who signs in, ensure that their documents folder and the entire contents of it are encrypted. I typically like to leave this up to the user or whoever is using that encrypted application so that they can encrypt folders if they want or just individual files. It kind of leaves the options up to, to the user's discretion. Uh, this prevents any kind of confusion really so that things aren't, they, a user doesn't understand why they can't access a document all of a sudden or whatever that case may be. Um, <clears throat> The display key backup notifications when user key is created or changed, I leave that unchecked because I have encrypted that I force you or that I um, push the use of so that someone can easily back up their key. If you want to check this box, you can. Typically, what happens is a notification pops up in the bottom right hand corner of their screen whenever a cert's about to expire or whenever one's newly created, asking them if they want to back it up. Uh, so there's always, of course, diligent users who will pay attention to what that says and back it up. Somebody might be in a rush to get something done. That could be an annoyance and they just move it out of the way. So that's why I kind of like having that encrypted application as an option for people. Uh, with certificates here, we want to select our template, which is Osborne Pro EFS. So I click the Browse button and I have that selected. The default value is basic EFS. So we want ours because there are some differences between uh, security permissions and Active Directory publishing and such. So I also deselect allow EFS to generate self-signed certificates when a CA is not available. And that is because we want to correct any issues where the CA is not available and we want to ensure this one certificate gets used so that there's not uh, confusion later on. Also, um, if it can't reach the CA, it might not be able to reach our recovery agent. I have not tested that theory out, but it just makes sense on my understanding of how it works. So with all that going on, we're going to click OK. I didn't modify the cache. I just left the defaults there and we click OK. The other thing we're doing here is if I right click encrypting file system and select create uh, data recovery agent, it assigns the EFS recovery agent certificate by default and it assigns it to the account I am logged in as and it basically adds it real quick. The other way you can do this is add data recovery agent, click next, browse directory and you can search and uh, let's see. So you can search, select your item here and then click OK and then click here to view and notice with this one okay click next finish this one's actually not going to be added because the private key is not there that might be a permissions thing I have to look into but just remember that as well if you're not seeing that key icon on the certificate here that's not going to be added into your recovery agents when a file is encrypted 
Uh, so I'm going to delete that since it's not going to be there. Uh, also here, you may, you don't need to do it in the default domain policy. I usually create a PKI policy for this, but we added trusted root certificate authorities. We added our root CA that's assigning these EFS certificates there. And we also assign that root CA certificate to intermediate certificate authorities. Uh, if you're not sure of how to get that cert, just to show you real quick, if we open certlm.msc on our certificate authority, then under your personal certificates, we have our root CA is this one here. So I would right click all tasks, export. We don't want to export the private key, so we leave that on no. Next, and then if you have Linux systems in your environment, you might want to use Base64 so that you can easily get the contents of this one and move it to wherever you need to for update CA certificates uh, or update CA trust, whatever's going on there. Now we would select the file we want to save this as, save, and uh, next, and it exports it. So once that's exported, we can install the certificate for one on our domain controller or import it over here by right clicking in our group policy value uh, for trusted root certificate authorities. And we're gonna do this on intermediate certificate authorities as well. Import, select the certificate we just exported so that it gets placed here. Another thing here we're going to do in the default domain policy because computer and user configurations are both going to be assigned is go to policies under user configuration and just to show that we're there uh, window settings security settings public key policies we want to now enable auto enrollment and certificate enrollment policy so I double click this ensure it's enabled leave the defaults and you'll see for properties, we have both of these selected as well. So that's enabled there. And then we want to enable auto enrollment. So I double click that enabled, check these two boxes, leave this at 10%. And uh, now the EFS certificates are going to be assigned to users uh, automatically. And that is basically how to set up EFS and how to use it in your environment. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, leave your comments below. Thanks so much for watching.